Well, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome back to the ranch. I'm Dr. Lee, and it is another beautiful day in South Texas. Weather's been crazy around here. 94 degrees with a heat index of 103 one day, followed the very next day by a 69 degree high. So been kind of crazy. However, in the last week or so, it's kind of beginning to plane out around that 92, 93 degrees every day. So you can kind of feel the summer heat a coming. So we will brace ourselves for that. But anyway, like I said, everything's good. We got Allie married, got her out of school, i.e. I got a pay raise. And um, she's off working now at her new position. And everything out here on the ranch has been real busy. We've been trying to keep up. And um, this is the time of the year where I got to start shredding pastures to get the grasses down so they do not become fire hazards because they are going to start dying out pretty quickly now. But uh, I'm back at the back of the ranch today. This is, and uh, hence, my little friend, um, uh, because there's a lot of hogs back here, a lot of hogs and babies. And we had to get them all cleared out with hunters and trappers last year, and they're already all back. It's interestingly enough, they did leave one hog here, a male, and I've been watching him and he has turned into a monster. He was about a year old last year, so he's, he was just a kind of a yearling baby last year. This year, he's, he has turned into a full grown pig. He's probably about 250 to 275 pounds now. And, um, but it's not the boars that you have to worry about. It's the mamas with the babies. They will charge you. And uh, that's why this is here. I'm out here at the back part of the ranch. I'm changing out the game cameras today. I figured with a uh, clickbaity title, like monsters and babies I better produce. So I do have some good videos, but in, in watching those videos when I was putting it all together and editing this video, I noticed that the quality is beginning to suffer. So I've got four new cameras. I, uh, I just pulled this one off a uh, tree over here. This particular camera, it's a Moultrie camera. It's about a year and a half old. And I noticed out here the other day that the uh, LED lights, they're not LEDs, they're infrared lights we're starting to fade. Watching this thing with night vision, you can tell that the uh, LEDs, about half of them worked and half of them didn't work. And, and this, this has a two year warranty on it, but um, that would be a, a little bit unkind for me to go try to get this thing replaced by warranty because I, I am mean to these cameras. We are brutal to these cameras. We move them all over the place. They ride in the back of old Luther here, which I guarantee you is a very bouncy ride. Uh, and the, the worst thing is they're out here when it's 110 degrees, they're out here when it's 22 degrees. And um, they run, I run them every day, 24 hours a day. So uh, we'll just go down and replace them with these new ones that I just bought. And this is the brand that I like. I've used Browning cameras, I've used um, uh, Stealth cams and the Moultrie's here most more than any other brands. And I like them all three the same. And the prices is all about the same and the quality is all about the same too. It's just that I can get these at Walmart anytime I, I uh, any, it's just that I can get these at Walmart anytime I tear one up. And, um, and, and they're, they're, they're just as good as any of the rest in that price range. I, I got these on sale for 98 bucks. Sometimes uh, you can do that. They're usually around $168, but, uh, Anyway, about them, bought a bunch of SD cards, and um, the people at Duracell love me. I keep them working the night shift, so I bought a bunch of batteries too. So we'll get all these new cameras up. Try to catch a, a lot more videos, uh, really, really good quality videos on all these new babies and the monsters as well that we have running around the ranch. Once again, I'm glad you're here. I hope the world's treating you well. Let's get on with the video. Here come the babies and the monsters. Well guys, here's our first case right here. I'd like for you to get an idea on just exactly how big these little prehistoric looking uh, monsters are. Actually, the most of the armadillos we see around here are just about the size of a junior size football. They're not very big. They get down in little tiny holes and um, they're, they're dumb as a post and very predictable. I see them on this same trail every night. But now I'd like for you to look at this particular armadillo. I've been watching this guy for about a year now and he just gets bigger and bigger and bigger. Here's a different view of him coming the other way. Um, his hole where he lives, his den, is right over in front of Luther here and I swear you could roll a bowling ball down in it. So there is 
monster number one. And here's just your everyday ordinary trash pandas coming through. And I just wanted you to see, again, the size of these little guys. The one in the back has a broken leg, and I've been able to watch him for the last couple of years. So I know, as long as I've been watching him, he's an adult. And that's how big the adults normally are. Now look at this dude. He is huge. This one, again, I've been watching him for just about a year. And I swear, this is going. This is already the biggest raccoon I have ever seen. They say that uh, 10 pounds of raccoon can whip 35 pounds of dog. Uh, this one looks like he could take out a 100 pounder pretty easy if that is indeed the case. Big fella. Okay, and here's these monsters again. And they say that pigs are more like humans than any other animal. And this film proves that if you look right here on May the 6th at 3.29 in the morning, you'll see him going to work. And then at 11.36 p.m. he's coming home. And then the next day at 3.35 a.m. he's going to work. And at 9.34 p.m. he's coming back home. And on the 8th of May, the next day, goes to work at 5.47, coming back home at 10.57. And he looks just about as excited as I usually look when I'm going to work. And right here are the fruits of his labor. Interestingly enough, the little black mama pig has all black babies except for one white spotted pig and the spotted mama has all spotted babies except for one little black pig so i guess it uh, just goes to show you there is an ugly duckling in every little family but uh, nevertheless these are the guys that we have to call out of here they are not indigenous species and this ranch is uh, designated by law as a sanctuary for the indigenous species and if we leave these guys here they will destroy the land and the indigenous species cannot survive here. And I hate it just as much as you do, but unfortunately that's just the way it is these days. And with all the new babies coming around, the predators are thriving as well. We see these coyotes uh, coming into the ranch this time of year, especially, and uh, their numbers are, are really increasing too. And they're very, very healthy dogs. And also not only the coyotes, but uh, we see a lot of foxes coming in too. Uh, got a lot of foxes this year. And this is usually the way we see the foxes. We catch them late at night on the game cameras. Every now and then we'll see them through the day, but rarely do we catch them in color. It's usually the black and white nighttime films that we see, but there's a little fox right there in color, pretty little fox. But we did get uh, one of the most beautiful, beautiful videos of uh, a gray fox. These are all gray foxes that you're seeing right here. And this following video that you'll see, that's the best video I've ever had. I'll repeat it for you a couple of times here. But my goodness, what a, a beautiful little animal that is. Really, little, little female fox. She's really, really pretty. And here's our mama deer and our brand new babies. This is the cute part of the video. And this little baby can't even figure out how to walk yet. He's having to bunny hop because he can't really figure out how to do the stride. This mama right here, I had to watch her for a minute. Uh, see what she was staring at and she was staring at something that moved behind her back down that lane and I had to run this video back two or three times before I could see it here it is repeatedly and you can see it over and over and over and that is her baby and he's not very much older than the one that you just saw that was struggling to walk uh, they learn how to walk really really quickly and learn how to run really really quickly so they can get out of the way of the coyotes because the predators will the, and and now the hogs too will catch him up but he's learning how to walk there but uh, real cute little baby that's the same little baby right there and you can see him kind of struggling this is another one that's just a little bit older and here's one that's uh, just a little bit older yet but boy the fawn crop is really looking good there's an older fawn right there probably a week to 10 days old and there's another one right there just about that same age they can at 10 to 14 days they can really get a, get along pretty well this one is in a dangerous area there's a bunch of hogs where this little baby's going through same here this is the same exact area and this is uh, this is where i am today uh, getting the game cameras back down and there's a lot of hogs in this area so I'd feel better if these little babies would get out of here and go somewhere a little bit safer. Hopefully their mothers are taking them to a little bit more of a sanctuary and there's a couple of twins for you there. This little baby's also in a dangerous 
area. This is where we see the coyotes most of the time. And then just one more big ugly monster for you. Saw this porcupine coming through last week. And that brings us up to the part of the video where I want to show you monsters and beauty all at the same time. We've been seeing this big guy out on the ranch. He's kind of uh, skittish. He's really, really shy and he's kind of hard to get near. Uh, this is taken with my uh, uh, camera with a 50x zoom on it. This one's taken out of the car and you can get the car up to him a lot closer than you can uh, on foot or on a four-wheeler, either one. But he is probably, uh, as far as my wife and I or the kids can remember, he's probably the biggest deer, uh, not just body size, but also his antlers, probably the biggest deer that we've ever seen out here on the ranch. And again, these are Axis deer. They come from India, uh, Nepal, and uh, that's pretty much where they stay. They, they were uh, brought into Hawaii in the 1850s and they were brought into Texas in uh, 1936, if memory serves me correctly. And here you can see me driving the truck upon him right now. And uh, he'll kind of hang there a little bit, but still kind of skittish. But uh, boy, these are beautiful animals. They're bigger than white-tailed deer and they're more hardy. They, they are more disease resistant, uh, parasite resistant, and they just seem to thrive in South Texas. Uh, we have thousands of them that uh, run free these days. They came in as exotics and were on ranches, but they escaped and uh, started prol proliferating in the wild. But now they're just everywhere. They seem to really be uh, doing well in South Texas. Actually, they're kind of pushing the whitetails out. And again, this uh, ranch here is supposed to be taking care of the indigenous species, the whitetail deer, not the axis deer. So um, I kind of try to take care of both of them, if you know what I mean, because I love them all, uh, especially these great old big deer like you're seeing right here. But anyway, I thought you would enjoy seeing uh, this monster of a deer and uh, all of his pretty little girlfriends. Here's a couple of monsters that came on and they better look out. Uh, dogs running loose on ranches around here are, are not very welcome. They get to where they kill sheep and goats and baby deer and things like that. And a lot of the ranchers will shoot them on sight. Here's a couple of other monsters. They uh, are uh, building a tree stand. I'll let you see what they're up to. What you doing up in that tree, you monkey? I, maybe I should say, what are you doing up in that tree in the rain? Making a deer stand, Dad. Making a deer stand. For the deer to stand in. That's right. Don't want them to get their feet wet when the creek rises. They've been having to sit on the ground. <laughs> so you can tell he's feeling better. And uh, there goes Mark and Drew right there. After they built the tree stand, they took the four-wheelers out and tore it up. And I'll tell you this right now, for those of you who stay tuned all the way to the end of this video, there is a surprise for you. I am not one to give away Easter eggs, but in this case, I'll just tell you, you'll be rewarded with something pretty darn silly if you hang on to the bitter end. Well, folks, I hope you enjoyed all the monsters and babies today. And as I said earlier, I hope everything's going good in your world too. Once again, um, Uncle Floyd, and, and I appreciate you guys, you always ask about Uncle Floyd, ask how he's doing. He's been a little bit under the weather for the last couple of months. His bone marrow hasn't been working well, so he had to have a couple of transfusions, and he had to get hospitalized, just having some problems that uh, uh, super geriatric people have, but he's okay. He's back home from the hospital, and I talked to him just before I came out here. I called him, see how he was doing, and uh, still a little bit puny, but his sense of humor um, and wit are still 100% intact. You can, you can bet that will never change. But anyway, he told me to tell you hi, and he wanted me to tell you he loves you, and um, I will give you a little addendum here. Uh, he, if you don't remember, he's got a birthday coming up next month. He will be 105, so we're all, Looking forward to that. Um, Mark and I just got back from Houston yesterday, 
He had several doctor visits. He had another infusion of immunotherapy, and he also had an MRI, which showed that the tumor, once again, is smaller than it was previously at the last MRI, and considerably so. So um, the uh, immunotherapy seems to be working. The prayers seem to be working, and I think our good Lord is, is sparing my boy. So uh, uh, once again, I thank you all so much for all of your prayers and all of the kind cards and the, just the, the wonderful, beautiful kindness that you have expressed and shown my family during this incredibly difficult time. You guys are the best and you know I love you. I thank you so much for that. Uh, I just, I think God's taking care of Mark and uh, I think he will be completely healed. And, uh, but once again, I, 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 I uh, ask you for your prayers and, uh, uh, and, and lift Mark up in prayer and let's just see if we can get this boy healed. Uh, we also want you to know that all of you that ask for prayers, all of you that are having trouble, we always pray for you. And honestly, we, we pray for everyone who watches these channels and, and uh, we just uh, pray that God takes care of you and protects you and blesses your family too. So we're all in this together and our job here is to take care of one another. And on this channel, I think we do a pretty good job, especially compared to a lot of the other channels on YouTube. Well, anyway, guys, that's it from out here on the ranch. Once again, I appreciate so much you guys dropping in and visiting with us. I appreciate more than you know the kind comments that you leave for me, my family, and for all the other viewers here. Uh, you guys are, are just the best, and, and I love you dearly. So always remember that. Remember I love you, and we will look forward to seeing you right back here next time. Take care now. Bye-bye. throw you a rope from here. I'm dying. I'm running out of power. You're getting water? You're taking on water in your motor? Yeah. Oh, shoot. Mark is stuck. And now I am stuck. It just happens the reason why you... I got stuck. <laughs> then Dad came to rescue. <laughs> You're you're so deep, so deep. What you doing there, huh? Neutering dog, Dad. All right. Who's gonna learn you? That's a mistake.